JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 15th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will uh, jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, higher against all but two of the other major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It gained uh, ground against the CAD, CHF, JPY, NZD, and the Euro in that order while it underperformed versus GBP and Aussie. Now, the strengthening of the dollar and the weakening of the Luni and Kiwi suggests that uh, markets continue to trade in a risk off uh, manner. However, the weakening of the yen and franc combined with the strengthening of the Aussie and the pound points otherwise. Therefore, in order to clear things up with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, uh, major um, EU indices uh, continue to slide, with the exceptions being Italy's FTSE, MIB and Spain's IBEX um, 35, while all three of Wall Street's uh, main indices finished uh, lower. Nasdaq lost the most ground. Now, appetite stayed soft during the Asian session today as well. With no new clear catalyst to drive the markets, uh, yesterday we believe that investors may have continued uh, reducing their risk exposures due to fresh concerns over the Omicron coronavirus variant after the UK reported the first death from the strain, but also due to expectations over a hoggish Fed uh, later today, especially after data yesterday showed that uh, the US PPI is accelerated by more than anticipated in, um, in November with uh, both the headline and core rates hitting uh, fresh record highs. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Fed Chair Jerome Powell appeared hoggish before the US Congress, saying that he and his colleagues may need to drop the transitory wording uh, with regards to inflation from uh, their statement, and also accelerate the pace of um, their quantitative easing tapering uh, process. Thus, given that these are the changes already anticipated uh, for today, if uh, indeed delivered, they are unlikely to be the main cause of, um, of uh, market uh, volatility. We believe that this may be the committee's updated economic projections or otherwise a new dot plot. According to the Fed Fund Futures, market participants believe that US policymakers will deliver their uh, first post-pandemic quarter point hike in July next year, while they factor in another one by the end of the year. Therefore, with uh, that in mind, we believe that the new plot needs to point to two or more interest rate hikes for 2022 in order for the US dollar to keep strengthening. Now, as for the equities, bearing in mind how investors behave ahead of uh, the decision, we believe that a steeper rate path could result in further selling, as higher rates uh, sooner mean higher borrowing costs uh, for companies as well as lower present values. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the early European morning, we already got the UK CPIs for November with um, both the headline and core rates rising by more than anticipated. However, the pound added only 15 pips at the time of the release, perhaps as market participants are convinced that the latest COVID-related restrictions in the UK will keep the Bank of England's hands off the hike button on Thursday. Later in the day, ahead of the FOMC decision, we have the US retail sales and Canada CPIs both for November. In the US, both the headline and core sales are expected to have slowed, while in Canada, the headline rate is forecast to have held steady at 4.7% year over year, and the core one to have um, slid to 3.6%. 
tonight during the early Asian morning New Zealand um, releases its uh, GDP for the third quarter while a few hours later we get Australia's employment report for November so that's it uh, from me thank you very much for watching and listening for those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier you can subscribe to the weekly market outlook webinar which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT you can find the link in the description below so goodbye have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.